family, God bless you. So good to be here with one of uh, one of the fathers in the faith in this generation, Bill Johnson. Such an honor to have you with us today, brother. It's fun to be with you always. Well, you know, we're here in Buffalo right now at Tabernacle, and you were eight years ago, yeah. um, yourself and Pastor Jack Hayford yeah. and Brother Joseph Garlington yeah, yeah. Uh, were here when uh, when Bishop Reed um, laid hands on me and installed me to lead this work here. And you and Joseph Garlington are back with us yeah, this week yeah, again. I know, Pastor yeah. Jack is with us in spirit. Yeah. And um, But man, we're so honored to have you here. Thanks. Thanks. It's always fun. Fun to, fun to see you again. Yeah. You know, we were talking just a moment ago. Um, so much happening in our world, uh, you know, throw a dart and there's a problem, right? I mean, you can just, you know, all of these things happening. You're, you're carrying a tremendous amount of responsibility as someone who so many are looking to as a spiritual guide, a spiritual father in the Lord in this generation. And we honor that. We honor your journey in God. You know, I never told you this. We met years ago, which you won't remember, but we were in Nashville and, and I mean, Bethel was not Bethel at that point, right. if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I do. And uh, you and your precious wife, uh, Jim Gall, James Gall was hosting a prayer meeting yeah. at the home of a brother named David Dryland. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and I was in that prayer meeting. Is that right? There's about 30 of us. Yeah. And, and James is like, there's this pastor here. We want you to meet him. And I yeah, mean, I remember that. it was really, you know, I don't think there were any of the worship CDs or, you know, maybe a couple of the very early yeah. ones, but it, that must have been yeah, 20-ish, 25 years ago. Yeah, it would be at least 20 years. Yeah. Talk I, about some of those hidden years because behind moments where the Lord raises up a voice, there is a thousand places of hidden obedience and brokenness sure, and sure. you know a history in god that's formed first sure talk about those early years in that journey well we uh we made a decision early on um just to give him first place everybody says that so what that means for me is to learn how to be a people that host his presence make it a presence-based culture mm -hmm. um make it make it so that if he doesn't show up in an extraordinary way we have nothing to do <laughs> you know, that, that, that dependent on him coming. He's, he's with us all the time. So mm -hmm. theologically, that's it's a conflict. But but there is a practical part of giving place to the Holy Spirit to come and do what, what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, and learning to take risk, learning to follow, learning to do all those things is huge. But that was a huge part of our beginning, and it still is to this day. Mm -hmm. um, just learning to... Uh, to make worship a real priority, not just music, as valuable as music is, mm -hmm. it's actually the heartfelt response to a person. Mm -hmm. And uh, so learning to do that, uh, not not make the focus the gathering, but make the focus our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So in other words, I'm a presence-oriented person at home, mm -hmm. uh, driving the car, mm -hmm. uh, at lunch, you know, whatever it might be, it's, it's giving place to him mm -hmm. as a lifestyle. When you have a bunch of people doing that, the corporate gathering mm -hmm. is is extraordinary. And so that was that would be priority one. Priority mm -hmm. two would be we never set out to build a big ministry. We set out to build big people mm -hmm. and uh, really trying to develop the uniqueness of the individual mm -hmm. and give them a place to serve. It's a good place to dream because we, we're we kind of a permissional culture in a sense that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we'd ra rather try and fail than, than play it safe and, and, and not. So that's a huge mm -hmm. part of our life. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the Lord is obviously, you know, blessed and, and grown that. And you were sharing this morning in your session about, you know, caring for the acorn, you know, caring yeah, for the yeah. seed. Yeah. And I love that. Um, I've heard Bishop Reed, I think he's quoting Robert Schuler, I think it was, that, you know, um, you can count the number of seeds in an apple. Yeah. but never count the number of apples in oh, one seed. Yeah, that's powerful. And, and, and the power of small beginnings, the power Huge. of these small seminal catalytic moments. Um, I remember when Pastor Jack and um, Hesh and Bonnie Chavda, who are our family with the Eagles yeah. Wings family, I know that you're very close oh, yeah. with them. Hesh and Bonnie 
and I go back 30 years. Oh, goodness. And uh, I remember when they were together with us, uh, we were hosting a prayer meeting at the Israeli consulate in New York. Wow. And, and we just thought we were going to this one-off thing. And we're in that meeting. And it became clear by the Holy Spirit that the Lord was calling us to launch the global day of prayer for the peace of Jerusalem. And, and now, I mean, millions upon millions of people in all these languages have participated in that over the years. And, and you're in a moment and you're like, all of a sudden, the moment you're in is bigger than the moment, you know, that you're in. Talk about that acorn message for a moment, because that was so powerful this morning. And for folks who, who were not in the session. Well, we, we all pray big prayers. We pray great prayers. Of things we want to see happen from the transformation of a nation to mm -hmm. the salvation of my city or you know whatever and uh and oftentimes um we're not ready for the answer and so the lord answers in seed form uh, metaphorically i pray for an oak tree he gives me an acorn mm -hmm. and it's the stewardship of the acorn that develops me into the person that won't be killed by the mm -hmm. significant answer of the of the oak tree mm -hmm. uh, because people, people break under the weight of glory, mm -hmm. of breakthrough, mm -hmm. of fame, mm -hmm. of renown. You know, if, if God puts an anointing on you where every cancer case is healed mm -hmm. within 30 days, you're going to be in trouble. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. all of a sudden, I mean, there's people everywhere that are putting a demand on you. I, I remember a pastor I love, Pastor Jason Alvarez in, in New Jersey. We love Pastor Jason and Gail. He, he was preaching one time. He said, the anointing can kill you. You know, I mean, to carry that glory of the Lord, if you, we've got to, not in a fear-based way, yeah. but you look at, you know, you look at the tragedies of Samson, you look at situations, and Stuart, you have to know yeah. how to walk in that calling. That's the truth. Um, faith works through love. Love has to be the vehicle, the maturity, the character of, of putting God and people first, loving and serving, mm -hmm. is to be the vehicle that faith rides on. Mm -hmm. When you just elevate the one, when you just elevate the gift, you just elevate the breakthrough right. instead of the character that's supposed yeah. to be the container, then, then you have problems. And so the Lord puts us in situations to steward a seed right. and we become something. Which is where the element of time and patience and perseverance is added in. Absolutely. You know, the life of Joseph, yeah. who's given this yeah. extraordinary dream yeah. and then has to walk it out over such a long period yeah. of time. Yeah. Moses, you know, I mean, we love these biblical stories, but most of them have like 40 year oh, <laughs> trajectories. <It's depressing. laughs> these long, decades long trajectories, know, right? But seriously, in our Western instantaneous culture, yeah. to cultivate a mindset, how do we how do we inculcate in our children and in our the, the folks, you know, who look to us for discipleship? that, you know, take the long view. Yeah, yeah. well, it's, it's critical. It's, it's so we, we call it organic growth. It's, the, it's yeah. the real growth. It's not the hype growth. It's not the image growth. It's not the, um, it's not focused on, on the visual, uh, you know, image that I, yeah. that I carry. It's the authentic in the trenches yeah. in relationship with people. That's where, who we are is proven over time. And the other thing that I just, I love about you and that I see so evident in your ministry and that I have is, I rejoice that I see it with you because I have it in concern in other places is that we have to have this intergenerational link. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, when, when you get around movements that are just, either it's just a youth movement or it's just a middle age right. movement or whatever right. it is, yeah. You've really got to have, you know, he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There's, there's that intergenerational, you know, the older draw strength and hope from the young and the young draw wisdom and, and you know, understanding from the older. And, and, and I see that in your movement. Yeah. I see the, the wise way God has led you to, to blend those generations together. Has that been intentional? Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. And we enjoy it. Right, you know, I mean, it's and it probably it's, flows it's from that culture of honor. Yeah, it does, and and uh, I mean, you know, forty years ago when we had small groups, we'd make sure there were senior citizens all the way down to newborns. Wow, in the small group. And then See, they, there it is. They That's learned it. to do learn to do family together like that. And 
that's it. And, uh, not categorize. I, there's a place for teens meeting with teens and you know kindergartners meeting with other kindergartners and seniors. You know, there's a place for that. But the family itself is a family. Yeah. And once you stop living as family, you stop living as kingdom. Sure. It's kingdom is family. Our father versus the kingdom. Oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah. One yeah. final question. Yeah. Um, you know, in a lot of ways, the world has turned upside down in the last 18 months. <clears throat> America's gone through some tremendously difficult times. Our world has gone through upheaval. How, how do we stay encouraged in the Lord right now? And how do we set our sail for whatever this next season unfolds? Uh, all of us are believing that it's going to be glorious. But we do know that there are portions of the church that have gone through persecution. We've been blessed in the West to not have that. But, um, you know, how, how do we set our sails in the Lord with this uncertain time we're living in? I owe it to myself, to my family, and the people around me to always be filled with hope. I owe Come it on. I owe it oh, that's so good. Yeah. Be filled with hope always. You always. owe it to them. He, he, has, he has an answer for Come on. If I'm confused or distraught, that's that's my issue. If I, I tell our folks, I say, listen, if you get more input from mainstream media than you do the word of God, Come then on. your depression is self-inflicted. You're responsible for what you've brought about in your own heart and mind. You can't expose yourself. When, when you watch mainstream media, you're watching the, the um, careless thoughts often of unregenerated people. And why should I entertain their problems as though they were mine? I should never mm. subject myself to that. Mm. It doesn't mean we don't, you know, ever pay attention to yeah. what's happening. But it's just that diet. We have, yeah. we have a bad news yeah. uh, culture and diet. And there's no reason for it. God has solutions. There's so much good that's going on right now in the middle of the crisis. That's right. Climate. And you just, you, you attract what you value. And if you value the report of the Lord and what he's mm. saying and what he's doing, you'll attract it. It's everywhere. And I, uh, I owe it to people to make sure that I stay filled with hope. And it's not just a pie in the sky thing. It's very practical. He has answers. And there's not Beautiful. one situation that we are facing that he hasn't already predetermined an answer. I mean, before the fall of mm -hmm. <laughs> Adam and Eve, he had already prepared for the re redemption. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's like before there's a problem, he provides the answer. Yeah. And he's no different. He's a way maker. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I just think we, we just have to, Silence the noise. Mm -hmm. Silence the noise. Get before the Lord. The illustration I like to use is uh, in the wilderness, um, he showed up as a pillar of fire yeah. by night, yeah. a cloud by day. He shows up opposite to the surroundings. Mm -hmm. So how does he show up in a recession? Mm, wow. How does he manifest himself in a pandemic? Mm -hmm. How does he reveal himself in the midst of racial conflict? Mm -hmm. He's the solution. He's not just got a good idea. His presence is the absolute solution of what's needed in any given crisis. Mm. So being a presence-based people that have the courage to ask for the answers, the solutions, is really what uh, what this world is needing. It's needing us to have hope. Hope. Yeah. yeah. Hope. There it is. Yeah. Folks, Brother Bill Johnson, if you don't know him, you live under a rock. We're... <laughs> We're glad for this time that uh, that you've uh, stopped on by. And uh, Pastor Bill, just pray for us as we go out. Just Absolutely. pray and bless folks. Yeah. Father, I do. I ask that, uh, that for every one of us, hope would become infectious. Come on. Everybody under our influence, from families, co-workers, that our hope truly would be that contagious influence in the environment. Hope in you, hope yes. in God, hope in God. You are the restorer, the great redeemer. So I pray, mm -hmm. invade our dream life. Mm -hmm. Help us to attract the kinds of words that build hope mm -hmm. and to be a people that stand strong in the midst of uh, challenges and difficulties. Mm -hmm. We want to grab this moment, this opportunity for you to be glorified. That's our cry. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you, sir. We honor you. We honor you. We love you. God bless you. Keep praying for the peace.